Considering buying an EE broadband plan with their new Smart Hub Pro router, in this video we've reviewed EE's Wi-Fi 7 router to see if it's any good, and we've also explained a bit about what it's like to use in the real world so you can decide if EE broadband and their router are a good choice for you. But before we begin, if you're considering buying EE broadband, make sure to click the link in the description to come to the EE website and see the best deals they're offering at the moment when you're watching this. Once you click the link, just put in your postcode on their website here, and then their new Wi-Fi 7 router is available on their fastest 1.6 gigabit plans. So just like with the EE Smart Hub Plus, which is another one of their routers we've also reviewed, getting set up with the Smart Hub Pro is really easy. When you open the box, you'll see the router, and it comes with a white ethernet cable. All you need to do is plug the ethernet cable into the router, and plug the other end into your open reach modem. Then take the included power brick, and plug the router into power. Then it'll begin setting itself up, which normally takes about 2-3 to three minutes. The EE logo here on the front of the router also doubles as its status light. When it's turquoise, this means it's ready to go and you can connect to Wi-Fi. But if the light is flashing, this means that it's not ready yet. And if it's yellow, this means it doesn't have a broadband signal. We had no issues getting set up with this router. It was pretty quick and really easy. It's also worth mentioning, if you're upgrading to EE full fiber broadband, and it's the first time you're using full fiber open reach broadband at your address, they'll probably need to send an engineer out. And this means the engineer will set up the router for you, so you don't have to worry about this. So once you get set up with the router, you can immediately connect to Wi-Fi and get online. But if you want to customize things, there's heaps of options in the admin portal and also on the EE Home app. Honestly, the app is a bit of a hassle and it can sometimes be a bit buggy, but this is where you have to go if you want to change things like parental controls. There are some things you can't access in the admin portal, but since the app wasn't amazing for us, and it didn't contain most of the things we wanted to change. We mostly just stuck with the web admin portal. Since this is a Wi-Fi 7 router, you get three different Wi-Fi bands, and you can change all their settings in here. Plus, you get quite good visibility of all the devices connected to the network, and you can see what bandwidth they're using, and stuff like that. Overall, the admin settings are pretty similar to other BT and EE routers we've looked at. The main difference from the Smart Hub Plus is, on the Smart Hub Pro, you can set up dynamic DNS, helping you connect to your home network with a consistent domain name, if that's something that would be useful to you. But still, just like with most BT and DE routers, you can't define the DNS service on a router level, so you'll have to keep doing it by device, which is a bit annoying. Overall though, the admin interface is pretty intuitive, and there's a good range of options in here. We just wish you didn't have to use the app for certain things, and you could define the DNS service that the router's using, rather than having to go and set it up device by device. This router is the best we've ever used in terms of Wi-Fi signal. No matter whether we were using a Wi-Fi 6 or a Wi-Fi 7 compatible device, we got really amazing coverage basically all the time. We tested this router in a four bedroom house that's been renovated quite a bit, meaning there's quite a lot of thick brick internal walls which have often caused Wi-Fi issues for us in the past, especially when using old Wi-Fi 5 routers. And we had to install the Smart Hub Pro near the front door because that's where our open reach connection comes in, so we couldn't put it in a central location. Even with this setup, we get really good Wi-Fi signal throughout the entire house, and even extending into the back garden, which is a pretty decent distance away from where the router is. If you buy this router on EE's fastest plans, it comes with a Wi-Fi signal booster, but we upgraded to this router separately, so we're not using any Wi-Fi enhancer products with it. Despite this, we had no issues, and didn't really have the need for a mesh Wi-Fi system. We get really good signal throughout the house, and it only begins to drop off if you walk down the road, which is really nice. Remember, click the link in the description to come to the EE website, and see which plans they're shipping the Smart Hub Pro on at the moment. Maybe by the time you're watching this, they'll begin shipping it on these plans as well. But even if you can't get the Smart Hub Pro router, or you don't want to buy EE's fastest plan, their other Smart Hub Plus router is also really good. From our testing, its signal is almost as good as the Smart Hub Pro, especially at range, just the Smart Hub Pro has a bit of an edge when it comes to speeds, especially on Wi-Fi 7 compatible devices. With the Smart Hub Pro, our download and upload speeds were really consistent, basically no matter where we were, and our latency was very low as well. We're currently using this router on EE's Full Fiber 150 Essentials plan. Using this plan, we see 140 to 150 megabits basically all the time, no matter where we are in the house. 
Staying on the higher end of that scale, if we're on a Wi-Fi 7 device, our latency stays around 10 milliseconds, and our upload speed is really consistent as well. Because of its consistent download speeds and latency, this router is a pretty good choice for gamers. If you have a Wi-Fi 7 device, you might be able to avoid the need to connect to the router via Ethernet, just because the Wi-Fi is so good. Our speeds only begin to drop off if we do something like begin walking down the road, or go deep into the back garden. So for us, the Smart Hub Pro has been a really good way to get fast download speeds throughout the house, even though we only have a few devices that are Wi-Fi 7 compatible at the moment. So if you have more up-to-date tech, you'll be able to get even more out of this router. It's also worth mentioning, from a speed point of view, the other good thing about Wi-Fi 7 is it can handle these ultra-fast speeds. Wi-Fi 6 will typically top out at about 900 megabits per second, but that's not the case with Wi-Fi 7. So if you're using this router on EE's fastest plans, you'll be able to get these sorts of speeds over Wi-Fi, which not a lot of other providers allow you to do at the moment. Most of them still ship Wi-Fi 6 or even Wi-Fi 5 routers, which just don't support these sorts of speeds over Wi-Fi. The caveat is, to get more than 900 megabits per second over Wi-Fi, you'll need a device that's Wi-Fi 7 compatible, which probably means something that's been released in the last year or so. So this route is really good, but given their pricing, is EE Broadband good value for money? Generally, we think EE Broadband is definitely worth considering. As we touched on before, they offer two different routers at the moment. The Smart Hub Pro comes on their fastest plans by default, and this black router, the Smart Hub Plus, comes by default on these plans here. From our testing, both of these routers perform really well. Although they both have the same limitation about setting up custom DNS, they both offer really good Wi-Fi signal and speeds. So overall, the routers that EE is shipping are some of the best on the market, especially the Smart Hub Pro. Given that, their monthly costs are pretty reasonable. Compared to the likes of BT, which is still shipping a Wi-Fi 5 router, there's no upfront cost on most of these plans, and you also get extra benefits if you're an EE mobile customer, allowing you to upgrade to unlimited data on existing plans, and also get cheaper prices when buying new EE sims. Not to mention, you can avoid locking into a long-term EE mobile contract when you do this. So generally, if the prices here are looking good, EE Broadband tends to offer really good value for money, given the routers and other benefits they're including. Remember, click the link in the description to come to the EE website, and see if they're offering competitive deals when you're watching this. The one sort of issue with EE from a value for money perspective is their 1.6 gigabit plan is quite expensive, especially if you buy this other option that comes with Xbox Game Pass. It's considerably more expensive than their other deals, but comes with basically the same upload speed, although you do get a Wi-Fi booster included for free. If you want fast broadband and the best possible Wi-Fi performance, we think EE is definitely worth considering. These two routers they're offering are some of the best on the market at the moment from any major provider, especially the Smart Hub Pro. Even if you don't have a lot of Wi-Fi 7 compatible devices yet, this router is really good for future-proofing because Wi-Fi 7 is what most devices are going to come with from now on, meaning you should be able to use this router for 5 years or probably even longer and still get really amazing signal and speeds. We just wish EE would ship their better router on some of their other ultra-fast deals, like the 500 and 900 megabit ones. And even if you just get their Wi-Fi 6 router, from our testing, it performs really well. Remember, click the link in the description to come to the EE website to see if they're offering competitive deals on this router and their broadband plans when you're watching this. And if you have any questions about EE Broadband or the Smart Hub Pro, leave a comment below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can.